Good day, dear students. Today's lecture topic is synchronous and asynchronous learning. And today I'm going to focus on five points, five issues, synchronous and asynchronous learning, their advantages and disadvantages, blended learning, feedback, digital tools. Nowadays, due to pandemic, many universities were forced to move their classes from face-to-face -face classroom to a distance e-learning. E-learning means here as learning and teaching online through network technologies is arguably one of the most powerful responses to the growing need for education. For e-learning initiatives to succeed, educational institutions must understand the benefits and limitations of different e-learning techniques and methods. Analysis of references on e-learning's effectiveness shows that there are two basic types of e-learning, asynchronous and synchronous. Until recently, e-learning initiatives mainly relied on synchronous asynchronous means for teaching and learning however res recent improvements in technology and increasing bandwidth capabilities have led to the growing popularity of synchronous e-learning synchronous e-learning e synchronous learning is online or distance education that happens in real time, often with a set class schedule and required login times, commonly supported by media such as video conferencing, interactive webinars, chat-based online discussions and lectures that are broadcast at the same time. It refers to education in which the students have the opportunity to learn and interact at the moment, live, with their teacher and peers. Specifically, synchronous group learning is a type of group learning where everyone learns at the same time. The biggest disadvantage of the synchronous model is that when all parties are connected, there is a real interaction between teachers and students, and any problem they have can be resolved at the moment. On the other hand, the disadvantages of synchronous synchronous model is that it depends on technology to make it happen. For example, whether or not the student has a computer to connect online or access to a stable internet connection. In this slide, uh, there are some advantages and disadvantages of synchronous learning. So, advantages are interaction between participants, exchange of knowledge and experience between participants, real-time feedback for the instructor, training happens on a fixed schedule. And there are some disadvantages, such as technical challenges, scheduling, share time. These advantages and disadvantages only show the fact that booths will not be effective if they do not have a pedagogical methodology that considers technology and how to optimize it. The quality of classes or learning depends on good planning and design that allows students to better understand the, co the content as well as a continuous review and evaluation of the effectiveness of each type of learning. Asynchronous e-learning does not require real-time interaction. Instead, content is available online for students to access when it best suits the schedules and assignments are completed to deadlines. It commonly facilitated by media such as email 
and discussion board, supports work relations among learners and with teachers, even when participants cannot be online at the same time. It is thus a key component of flexible e-learning. In fact, many people take online courses because of their asynchronous nature, combining education with work, family, and other commitment. Asynchronous e-learning um, makes it possible for learners to log on to an e-learning environment to any time and download documents or send messages to teachers and peers. Students may spend more time refining their contributions, which are generally considered more thoughtful compared to synchronous communication. According to Choosing the Learning Style, Guy stated that successful distance learners preferred an independent learning environment. And asynchronous e-learning also allows the teacher to be flexible and create learning environment that enable greater choice for students, which in turn reaches a greater variety of learning styles. A synchronous learning gives students independence. That also helps in learning. And uh, according to Hrastinsky, the asynchronous approach allows students to log in any time that fits their schedules to download documents, send messages to peers or instructors, or submit documentation. This flexibility allows students to spend more time refining their contributions, which are generally considered more thoughtful compared to synchronous communication. One of the most significant advantages of this type of learning is that it allows the student to be independent, permitting them to organize their time their way. Also, the classes are available at all times. Students can download the content and access it even if they do not have internet. This also helps when the student wants to return to a lesson or activity and review it if he or she has concerns, questions. Uh, the only major disadvantages of this model is that there is no real interaction between educators and their students, not between the students and their peers. So if they have a question, it will not be resolved at the moment. Now uh, I'm going to present some uh, advantages and disadvantages in this slide. So advantages are self-paced, personalized key schedule, you can speed up or slow down or repeat content. Uh, asynchronous learning builds autonomy, not reliant on synchronized technology. And there are some disadvantages, such as teacher not available for immediate question and feedback, less community, it's like isolation, and possibly more confusion. Current research overwhelmingly shows that asynchronous learning benefits online students by giving them the flexibility they need and desire. Furthermore, asynchronous learning gives students more time to reflect on course content which generally results in more substantive and quality work. Synchronous communication in online courses allows students to develop a learning community among the participants. It also allows for clearer communication among peers and can lead to high level of learner engagement. Uh, what are the differences between synchronous and asynchronous learning? In synchronous learning, traditional classroom, instant, instant messaging, asynchronous learning, recorded class, you use emails. In synchronous learning, 
you can give immediate feedback from instructor and peers. But in synchronous learning, you can send a question and wait for an answer. Now, during synchronous learning, you can make phone call, but asynchronous, you can record voice message. In synchronous learning, you can uh, train in person. Asynchronous only, you take online training courses without live video. During synchronous learning, you can uh, use live webinar and asynchronous recording webinar. And in synchronous learning, group-based, asynchronous learning, self-based. And in synchronous learning, you can learn at the same time. Asynchronous learning, you can study in different times. Uh -huh. And uh, let's uh, answer some question like when, why, how, use asynchronous versus synchronous learning. When do we use asynchronous e-learning? When reflecting on complex issues, when synchronous meeting cannot be scheduled because of work, family, and other commitments. And when we use synchronous e-learning, when we discuss less complex issues, getting acquainted, and planning tasks. Why do we use asynchronous e-learning? When students have more time to reflect because the sender does not expect an immediate answer. And why do we use synchronous e-learning? Students become more committed and motivated because a quick response is expected. How do we use asynchronous uh, means such uh, as email, discussion, boards, and blogs? And uh, how do we use synchronous e-learning? We use uh, synchronous means such as video conferencing, instant messages, and chat and com complement with face-to-face -face meeting. And there are some examples of asynchronous learning. Students are expected to reflect individually on course topics, may be asked to maintain a blog. Students expect to share reflections regarding course topics and critically assess their peers' ideas, may be asked to participate in online discussions on discussion boards. And examples of synchronous e-learning, students expected to work in groups may be advised to use instant messaging as support for getting to know each other, exchanging ideas and planning tasks. A teacher who wants to present concepts from the literature in a simplified way might give an online lecture by video conferencing. And uh, talking about blended learning, it's important to say that for some disciplines, for example, for teaching foreign languages, a blended learning format is best suited, a synchronous approach for learning grammar and reading assignments, and synchronous online communication with the teacher to develop speaking skills. So, uh, and let's talk about feedback. And there are some feedback ideas for you. You can use for feedback Google Doc Comments, eJournal. Uh, for example, you can use a Google Doc for all the writing assignments throughout the semester. Uh, you can create a quiz with answer key in Google Forms, or the recorded feedback or speech to the, to the text, video conference with student, and email. And there are some digital tools uh, which are useful resources for creating synchronous and asynchronous learning elements like Google Classroom Insights, Moodle, Google Forms, Google Documents, Google Presentation, Jamboard, Flipgrid, Loom, Screencast-O-Matic, Screencastify, vMaker, Zoom, WhatsApp, Telegram, Padlet, Quizlet, Kahoot, and others. And there are also some useful uh, links how to make a Google Forum, 
sleep,